because that's who you look like, Mr. Peepers. He was on TV in the 50s. He had a little show, and it was kind of like, um, who's that guy that says it's a wonderful day? Uh, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, yeah. Mr. Peepers was before Mr. Rogers, and he was a little teeny guy, smart guy. He was kind of like a scientist. They had a scientist show. Where's the fucking uh, quasi-scientist? Where's that fucking gypsy? Where is he? Oh, you, the quasi-scientist, half-ass scientist. If you're going to make money, man, the fucking scientist, he's fucking... Anyway, Mr. Peepers has this little show, and he used to show kids how to boil water and bullshit like that. And, um, but he had glasses like that, a little thicker than yours, a little bow tie, Mr. Peepers. Fucking jerk. Fuck you. You're an asshole. Eat shit. This is what I used to use on conference calls. When somebody said something that was fucking just horse shit. Fuck you. And they'd say, I beg your pardon? You're an asshole. Well, uh, fucking jerk. I have never changed, now I don't know why, I've never changed a battery in this in 30 years. And it still works. Allah sending me a message. Is that possible even? 30 years, never change a fucking battery? No. It's not possible. But, last night's movie. When I tell you I'm going to do something, no matter what, like Mr. Wick, he fucking meant it. But every once in a while, somebody gives you a little help, like when the sniper helped him out. That's happened a couple of times with me. Somebody helped me out. As opposed to when you say, yeah, I, I'll try to get it done. That's the world I come from. It just so happens, that kind of shit, good, bad, or indifferent, I was around. I was around. Never saw it with my own eyes, other than a couple of dead bodies I already told you about. But the, um, as opposed to, yeah, um, I think I can get that done, Dan. I'll do my very best. Fucking cunts. Well, so far, and we've only talked, I've only talked to, you know, seven, eight people. And I went through the files again last night before I went to bed. And not using any specific names because we don't, you'd be embarrassed. We have people that don't, not sure who their father was. Mm-hmm. We have people that were adopted. So fucking what, you know? Um, we have people that um, um, their mother liked their brother or sister more than them because they weren't sure where you came from. Uh, uh, we have uh, people that are going to, you know, have drunken pigs for fathers. That's not a big, I mean, a lot of people have drunks for fathers. Um, we have people that, um, Wish that they had um, taken different di different uh, paths before they went in the military, after they went in the military. And there's a four, there's actually four military guys in here, only two uh, two Americans. We got guys that uh, never went to school and say they have no regrets, but they wish the fuck they had gone to school. We got guys that never finished university that say that it doesn't really matter, but they wish they had. And I can go on and on and on and on. Uh, um, the guys uh, that uh, wish they had uh, gone to medical school when they got accepted but didn't. Um, you got people that are making some decent money, in, in general terms, not in my terms, but in general terms, uh, that are embarrassed of what they do. And you wonder why this happens. I don't wonder why. I know why. Because, you know, you had bad leadership skills. If most of you had no leadership skills growing up. Zero. When I say bad, I had to rephrase that. None. Zero. And in fact, most parents don't, it's not that they don't give you the right example. They go beyond that and they give you the wrong example. So it's exacerbated. 
for the non-English speaking people, does everybody understand? It's, it's exaggerated. It's exaggerated. And the young kids, because you're so many of you are young in your 20s, you have intellectually and at some, on some level emotionally figured this out. That's why you're here. And that's the difference between now and 10, 15 years ago. And part of that's because of the uh, social media. Part of that's because of the you fuck and pod fucks and all this other bullshit that you could get information instantaneously uh, that you couldn't do before. So that's the good news about social media, not my judgment. And this is just one man's opinion. And uh, the, um, uh, somebody, a few people, yeah, we have deals for students for the attendance seminar, but, but if you had a fucking brain and you read my website, you wouldn't have to ask me on YouTube. Um, and uh, I'm, again, I'm not giving a seminar, especially for vets. Uh, and three, um, the, uh, there is a, a Pena payment plan if you, um, if you uh, apply and if um, you are, are chosen, because not everybody's chosen. Not everybody's chosen for the regular seminar either, just so you understand that. We had a lot more people to apply than this. And I, I'm not trying to uh, tell you that you were special in any way, shape, manner, or fucking form. Don't misunderstand me. But when, when I look at the potpourri of names, you know, let's say the 40, 50 people wanted to be here, and I decide who would make the right fit for the group, and that's how and why virtually all of you are here. And um, brothers are sitting together. Is there, is there a reason for that? No, no oh, okay, don't. No, none of that. We don't want any fucking uh, um, demonstrations. You know, demonstrations are okay out there in the in that world, but not in this world. Not in this world. And so uh, the the group, uh, I felt had a good mix. And um, the but um, well, getting back to that movie last night, um, some people. That world really exists. And just because you never saw it in Bakersfield, I mean, that really exists. That's a real fucking world. And uh, it, it hones in on the Russian guys. But, and the um, couple people in the audience understand that world better than the others. But um, the, um, and I told you, the QLA model is the mafia model except you don't put a gun in their mouth. But you're giving them an opportunity, you're giving them a, um, a, um, an opportunity that they uh, can't resist, more or less. And that's why it works, and it has worked for a long, long time. So Andrew Carnegie's. Any questions on anything that we've covered so far? Um, I see um, I, uh, the curry wasn't bad. I'm not any expert on curry for last night. Um, I'm, I'm rather surprised Sally wanted to go have the Indian food because um, um, we don't uh, normally eat too much Indian food. And tonight we have the regular, we're having a regular deal, uh, dinner in the, uh, in the main dining room uh, here as opposed to where you had it last night. Um, the, um, most of you in this room don't know anybody even remotely close to what you saw last night other than seeing it in movies. Remotely even close. There's not many, in fact, none other than me at the club that we were, talk were talking about. There aren't any. They're just, unless they've slipped some in that I don't know about some members there. Um, but there are people here, you know, I've told you we've had people from the drug cartel from South America come to the seminar. Um, and we've had some, you know, people that are have uh, uh, their second chance in life, so to speak, because we give everybody, just about everybody, uh, an opportunity. If I, if if they uh, put it on paper and I and I believe it, uh, to come here, even if they've fucked up in life, fucked up, and we have some fuck ups in this room, just in case you hadn't hadn't noticed. And I don't know if you're swapping spit yet and sharing your tales of woe yet. It might be a little early for you to be sharing your tales of woe. Uh, but everybody's, everybody in this room has a story. 
Every single person in this room has a story, and all of them pretty much are ugly. Yes, YouTube. There used to be a program on TV, uh, it was called New York, New York City, or The City. Uh, and it's uh, eight million people in New York City on this island, and there's eight million stories. Well, there's 24 people in this room, and there are 24 stories. And um, remember, inspiration or desperation is what gets you to change. And um, those stories are what evoke you. The first step in change is, for, in, in your case, is uh, for you to be here, although this is Matt's second time. Um, otherwise, if, you, if you were, everything was rosy in your lives, you wouldn't be here. No questions? Anything you want to share with YouTube other than go fuck themselves? Yeah, go fuck yourself, YouTube. Okay, YouTube. See you later. Thank you.